everybody. Welcome to the Year in Racing Review of the Speed Vision World Challenge Touring Car Championship. I'm Greg Kramer. All season long, I had the honor of announcing these races from the play-by-play -play chair, but I had the honor as well of working with Dorsey Schrader, Trans Am champion, IMSA champion, current very fast driver in sports prototypes. He was the analyst, and Dorsey joins us in that role again today. Dorsey, first of all, welcome. And I think something we have to look at in this series, it was already exciting, but this year we found it to be deeper and faster. Boy, you're right about that, Greg. Only a couple of years ago, we had one major player, a big team, with a lot of smaller teams along the way. Now the whole field is comprised of multiple car teams. And driver talent, well, some of the best-known guys in the United States are coming to this series. And as a matter of fact, it was really created in the image of the British Touring Car Championship, but many feel it's already exceeded that series in terms of raw excitement. We're going to be looking at a lot of things in the next hour. The first is the first use of standing starts in the championship, front drive versus rear drive. That was very interesting. Acura and BMW, that battle continued. In fact, it really almost shook out as the two distinct halves to the season. And the war of words was intense, too. BMW was saying the Acura's too fast. Acura drivers were saying, no, BMWs are plenty fast. The drivers need to step it up just a little bit. Taz Harvey, one of the great personalities, had the most bizarre up and down of roller coaster rides throughout the entire season. But some things remain the same. 97 champion Pierre Kleinubing, when we got to the opening round at Charlotte, came out of the blocks fast. It's going to be interesting. Now, watch for the lights. When the red lights go on, it's a matter of seconds. We're gone! The season is underway. Great start by Salam on the outside. It drops down in a hurry, and we saw some action. Oh, he's going to hit right there. Race. Yeah, and he's, he's oh, still getting hit. Again. <laughs> on board there, you're getting rubbed on. That's what I was talking about. And the spin, I think. Oh, yeah, look at here. Big problem. He's going to come back down the hill. Fastest. Nobody collected it. That was really lucky. We're not sure what the problem is. We're going to try and get a word here with Taz. Taz, why you're in, mate? I just screwed up, Calvin. I, I tried to hit fifth coming out of the chicane, and I hit four third, over the motor, and blew it up. Oh, no. Oh, the touch. This is going to be a big hit. Oh, Steve Lisa gets into the wall. Comprehensive damage to the car, and he's drifting up on the track. We are clean. On board with Charlie Downs. What a remarkable charge. He's oh. Big hit, takes out two cars so far. I don't know how that got on Miss Q, but boy, oh boy, was that a hit. Now we're on board with Pierre Kleinuby, your race leader. And he's been saying all weekend that this car, Dorsey, is handling incredibly well through these, this twisty infield section. He looks far quicker, able to be more aggressive than almost anybody else. Uh-oh, big wreck here. That's the chicane. That's Mike Fitzgerald, and I told you that was going to happen before the day was over. He's plowed through the barrier. He's lucky he didn't flip the car right there. Hit it dead sideways. I wonder why the air dam in the front looks so good with all those tires knocked on. And there's the green. Oh, and Plum got a great jump on Turner. But he's on the outside, and there's no room to go there. I don't know what he's going to do with all that. Turner now by. Boy, what happened to Peter? He Cut got him. swallowed. Hugh Plum now is back in second spot, cutting him third. And I wonder now if Petey is uh, settling in, Dorsey, perhaps, to finish behind his two lead cars that he's putting out there as the real-time racing team. I think, uh, though, his point has been proven that the BMW is, is a competitive car against his accuracy. So he's come from a very dead last position and run down his two teammates, and I think he could pass him if he wanted. Oh, it's battle for six, and problems. That's, I think, Charlie Downs, and he just got nabbed by Paul Moore. Right, and uh, the third place car back to one of the accurate Watch the Turner Motorsports BMW up on top. It's not going to make the chicane. It's going to get collected, actually. Holy cow, that is a very big hit. Oh, watch this. That was the hit. Holy cow. Kleinubing takes the win, and he did it from pole in a fairly dominant, impressive run. Teammate Hugh Plum second. Team owner, Petey Cunningham third. That's a one, two, three for real time, no matter which way you look at this. <laughs> exactly right. So that was the conclusion of the first round at Charlotte. And as you can see, Klein being the win over teammate Hugh Plum. Team owner Peter Cunningham, though, entering a BMW and ending up in third in front of Turner Salama and then the remainder of the top ten. And Dorsey, I think that's fairly interesting in the sense that, you know, they'd been saying the BMWs were fast. Petey Cunningham got in the car and proved it. And that is, in fact, what he did. You know, he, he owns the Acura team. He gets in the BMW. He drives them back and comes all the way to a third-place finish. His point's well made. Very well made indeed. Now, keep in mind... 
Pierre Klein Newbing's nemesis last year, the champion in the, in the season, was Michael Galati. He was gone. He was racing in GT for Audi, but Pierre was able to be gone as well because he had the perfect weekend. Pole, fast race lap, let every lap, and got the win. Doesn't get much better than that. And not only did Pierre get off to a quick start at Charlotte, but his good fortune continued at round two as well, where it was all clear road ahead. When we come back, we'll take you to Mosport. This Year in Racing Special is sponsored by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Welcome back, everybody. The next round of the championship was at the very fast, daunting Mosport International Raceway in Canada. There, Pierre Klein even continued his run as he put his Acura on pole. But a big development. TC Klein Racing produced some brand-new BMW 328Cis for Neil Sapp, Mike Fitzgerald, and autocross champion Sean Amarinus. How did it work? Well, at least in qualifying, Sapp and Fitzgerald qualified third and fourth. They were very quick, particularly for the latter half of the season. The writing may have been on the wall. Watch the red lights. When they go out, we are racing here in Mosport for round two of the Speed Vision Touring Car Championship. And the Bimmer's getting off fairly well, but a surprise, the actor is in front. We would suspect sometimes the rear-wheel drive Bimmer's with the weight transfer would get a jump, but there's not much of a run to that first corner, Dorsey, and it helped the actors, I think. This class normally runs nose to tail the whole race. Look at the huge lead Klein has got in just one lap. Dorsey, we've got a pass for second, and it's his teammate, Neil Sapp. Neil got a good run, and that's early on the straight. We're just climbing the hill. He gets a good draft, pulls to the outside, and look at the power. BMW got a good run off that last corner, that turn five that we always talk about. Oh, look at this, Travis. Up the inside. Oh, oh he got it. And spins him. He got bumped from behind. He got Turner hit him. Turner hit him, yeah. Will Plum. Turner just hit Plum. And what is funny, but the front wheel drive pulled itself through. In the meantime, Mike Fitzgerald's out in the gravel pit. Locked up brakes big time in turn five, five A. It goes straight off into the gravel track there. Yeah? So, obviously, no ABS on that BMW. <laughs> Only a couple laps to go, and these guys are really racing hard now. Uh, Desperation right up to the inside. He's going to go up the inside. Oh, he hits the curb, then hits the Acura. Now they're side by side another time. They're going to do it. There's another bump. It's going to put. Oh, oh. Trans good save. Only a pump with drive can save after that. <laughs> now they're side by side. This isn't over yet. This is what we're. Look at it. Side by side banging again. And here we go. Turn 10, and he's going to get not only a second wind, Darcy, but a second complete sweep from pole. Most laps, leading a lap, every possible point is going to Klein Newbie right now. And I doubt he even broke a sweat today. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the team. They're all happy. He's happy. I'd be happy too. Happy indeed. Klein Newbie again, another perfect weekend. Neil Sapp, though, second place, as we said, serving notice. Taz Harvey, that was really one of his highlights of the season here with Turner and DuPont rounding out the top five. We take a look at the rest of the top ten, and there was Sean Amarinus. Another good run as well. Now, we were talking about it. Obviously, Pierre Klein Newbie had continued his role with another perfect weekend. The pole led every lap, uh, led the most laps, got the win, fastest lap of the race. But Dorsey, the emergence of T.C. Klein's team, right away, they were a factor. Now, those were brand new cars. You would have thought the drivers may have been a little bit worried about them, but boy, they seem to love them. Makes a big statement, Greg. Three brand new bullets in uh, the arsenal for BMW. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty heavy. Very heavy indeed. Now, keep in mind, Taz Harvey, finished third and we talked about that was something that was really a highlight for him this year because it was so up and down for Taz we're going to be keeping track of his exploits as the season unfolded and when we come back the TC Klein BMWs continued to emerge and you won't believe what happened to real-time racing at Lime Rock we'll review that at round three next The third round of the championship was at Lime Rock Park in Connecticut, and as always, that proved very intriguing. In qualifying, Neil Sapp had a broken throttle cable. They parked the car, then they decided, let's see if we can fix it. He went out on the last lap and stole away the pole. It was a remarkable performance. We may have also seen the first chink in the armor, certainly for Pierre Klenub and maybe for real-time racing, as their trouble started before we got started, literally. And Pierre Kleinoub, the point leader, he has had really a perfect season coming in until this race. He had both poles, led every lap, led most laps, and the win, and he's parked. Calvin, uh, he's out of the car. Well, he is, and his day is done. We just spoke to Jerome Zimmerman. He said he's out of it. The half shaft is broken. The day is done. It's now down to Plum and Shrads to see if they can score a victory ahead of that BMW. There's the board. Enjoy this. Standing starts. Uh, back behind the first couple rows, 
and Darcy, the rear drive, that weight transfer in the BMW pit up, and a big bump right there. Oh, it's going to cause a big backup. Look right there, one of the Turner Motorsports cars off on the right. We got cars off on the left. The Acura, of course, front wheel drive. Look at all of the melee back here. It's still happening. There's cars on the grass both sides. There is Sap, and uh, there's nobody behind him, and there was all that bumping going on behind him earlier. Well, they made a big mistake letting Neil Sap get that far out in front. I guarantee you that. He knows this place very well. He drove a great lap in qualifying, and he's got a big, big lead. Right now, the Acura's fighting each other for second place. That's not going to help their cause. That's a rear bumper cover off one of the one of the cars, so someone's been in contact with someone off BMW off. That's the uphill. That's Sap on the uphill. Good save. That's a very scary moment right there. Well, and actually Plum a little loose as he set up for that. The uh, approach, the right-hander leading into the climbing turn, and I uh, was able to stay with it. That's one of the nice things. The back end steps out, and he's got a run on him. Well, it's a bad place to make a pass, though, because third place should go up the inside, not turn to the right. Trance can take both these guys if he wants to. That slowed him up at the apex. That's a bad place to make a pass. Watch now. Sap got a run on him as the exit of all. Watch now. We got three wide. Good guy to see it bottled everybody up. And Fitzgerald trying to go around Trance with three abreast for the big man. And the two Acuras now lead it. Sap and look at Dobson. Huge loose in the Sunfire of the Pontiac. He saved it. This is going to be interesting. And Hugh Plum, Kevin Schrantz has got it down. And Schrantz gets a run. Oh, they Schrantz gets a run. Look at this. They're bumping almost. Teammates hitting each other in the straightaway. Petey Cunningham will be pulling his hair out what's left of it. And a problem. That's Plum, and it looks as though he's pulling off the stop. And it may have been from a hit. Look at the right front. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they, they did damage to the tire. Look at the whole sap that's just hanging on for dear life. That BMW is losing the group. Trent looks like he's okay. The interesting story is that battle for second. Trent has the win. And there's the checker. Great celebrating, of course. Kevin Schrantz gets the win over Sapp Fitzgerald, Taz Harvey again on the upside of that roller coaster ride. Terry McCarthy, his first appearance uh, at the top five. We're going to hear from him again later in the season and the remainder of the top ten. Now, the undulating, short, fast, high-speed Lime Rock has always produced some absolutely incredible action. But we did see that first chink of the armor, Dorsey, I think, for real time. But they had plenty of bondo as Kevin Schrantz was able to step up and take the win depth of that team is tremendous. Well, Greg, that's one of the main reasons you run a multi-car team. So if your lead guy drops out, you have another fast guy to take the point. For Acura, that means points for the championship. And of course, for TC Klein, those BMWs still showing that they were going to be a major factor, again, particularly as we got a little bit later into the season. Now, let's take a look at the top five in terms of driver championship points. Sap now, with the misfortune for Klein, being slipped by two points into the lead. Will Turner right there, then Schrantz, then Alderman, who's been very strong, was in the top five early in the season. Now, after the break, we'll see how well Pierre and Hugh were able to rebound from their problems at Lime Rock. Round four from Sears Point is up next. Do not go away. Welcome back, everybody. The fourth round of the championship was at the very serpentine and very popular Sears Point International Raceway. Now, after their problems at Lime Rock, real-time racing discovered a bizarre and minor mechanical problem that was causing those failures. They apparently got back on track as Pierre and Hugh Plum qualified first and second. But in the race itself, a rare miscue by Pierre Kleinhubing would keep things interesting. There they are, let's listen and enjoy it. Boy, Dorsey, for a minute there, I thought Kleinhubing was going to get passed by Plum with a great start, but Kleinhubing back in front as they head up into turn two. He's wide, and oh, the back end comes out huge! <laughs> front wheel drive, he pulls it back. You see that three wide back there in the middle of the back? Watch on her left, Dorsey. Apparently, he and Harvey get together, Taz Harvey. Taz Harvey's going to go right there for the yellow car. She's pushing on him pretty hard. He gets it back under control right there and saves it. She hit him a pretty good lick. Back on board with our leader, Pierre Kleinhubing. Clear sailing, really, in his buy, seller, hold.com, real-time racing Acura. And right here, this turn here, it goes abruptly uphill. Goes down in gear for that. Up, oh, real loose. He got, well, good save. I tell you what he did. He got in there and he braked too late on a diagonal. He loses the lead because of that. Well, there's no question he's going to have a, a, a running together here. 
Well, that's Shauna Marinus gets him in the corner panel. Similar to the Taz Harvey incident, look, she goes off to avoid him. Normally, when they set up the starting blocks for the standing start, they use an environmentally friendly paint, but the tractor would not allow that, so they ended up having to use some powder. Oh, Talco powder, Fred Meyer, oh, oh! Almost collected the leader and his teammate, Hugh Plum, when Fred came back on track, Dorsey, that was incredibly close. Yeah, he was, I saw it up, look, you always, one thing you learn is to look way ahead of you. I saw that all happening up on top, I didn't know who it was, but I knew somebody was crashing up there. And look at Plum, that's that off camber corner. <laughs> He was big loose right there. Meanwhile, 210, here we go. Flying Newby drops two tires, and that's all. Oh, but he, he didn't lift, he didn't lose much, but it didn't allow him to make a dive to the inside. Plum loose! Plum got in way loose! Here comes Klein Newby, it's a drag race. Plum on the outside, just enough. Oh, it doesn't get much closer than that. It was, in fact, a very close race between the teammates with Plum winning over Klein Newbing. Don Salam after problems at Lime Rock back on the podium. Fitzgerald, Pfeffer rounding out the top five, then Schrantz, Turner, DuPont, Alderman, and Sapp. Now, we saw another example of the depth of real-time racing. Klein Newbing a problem, boom, right to the wind goes his teammate, Hugh Plum. For Taz Harvey, he finished 22nd. Roller coaster was heading down at that point. But Dorsey, with seven BMWs in the top ten, we're starting to see depth not just from real time. Well, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, Greg, the depth of this entire field. It's not just the three brand new cars that TC Klein has that are quick. The Turner Motorsports guys, they're coming on now. They're starting to play a serious role indeed. For Neil Sapp, though, he was his first time really struggling. Qualified only 14th, just barely managed to get into the top ten. And with his problems in that win by Klein Newbing, Klein Newbing found himself in the point lead, and not only that, at the next round, round five at St. Croix, Quebec, he was on pole for that race. At the start in St. Croix, as you can see, Pierre Kleinubing back on the pole alongside Mike Fitzgerald. That's the widest part of the track. They funnel into a very narrow piece of pavement right here. Now watch for Neil Sapp. Big loose right there, forces Fitz literally off track as well. And Pierre Kleinubing wasting no time, works his way around both Sapp and uh, very quickly here as Fitzgerald, dirt on the tires now, still loose. Kleinubing ducks right underneath and picks up the lead, one that he was going to hold for the rest of the race. Don Salam in the background, incredibly loose. The track very slippery. As you can see, windshield wipers on for Sapp right now as the rain's starting to pick up. Fitzgerald struggling, and Sapp goes around the outside. But look here, Kevin Schrantz, beautiful move down to the inside to get by Fitzgerald, who was clearly struggling. Watch Taz Harvey, gets it loose, goes major off-road excursion, saved it, lost a lot of time, certainly a few positions. And then watch here as Pierre Klein, who began to run, gets into the uh, left rear corner of Jason Potter, sends him sideways. Klein Newbing able to get away with it, continues on. His teammate, though, Hugh Plum, an immense incident. Plum would be okay if not shaken up just a little bit. It brought out a full course yellow. During that, the rains came. A deluge occurred, and as a result, it checkered. Klein Newbing the winner. And as always, Pierre, very happy, as you can see. He got the win. Sat back in second. Salama third. Schrantz, Taz Harvey, even with his problems, ended up in fifth. You take a look there at the rest of the top ten. Basically, Pierre Kleinubing ended up with his third perfect win, uh, weekend. It was abbreviated, but it was a very strong weekend. But then, Dorsey, you take a look. Who was second? Neil Sapp, right back. Don Salama, right back there in third. Again, the BMWs were starting to show something. And you know, you got to ask yourself, Greg, you got these multiple car teams of BMWs, and they don't, they're not together, but they are together under BMW's banner. So maybe some trading of some technology, some speed secrets being passed under the table. Well, you might as well work together if you can, no question of that. Now, it was evident the pendulum was starting to swing, and the second half of the season was going to have a vastly different look. Part two, when we come back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the year in racing for the Speed Vision Touring Car Championship. We're taking a look now at the second half of the season, not just numerically, but in terms of momentum. The pendulum was starting to swing. When we got to the sixth round of the championship at Texas Motor Speedway, we ran into some searing Texas heat. Temperatures of 109 degrees along with tropical style humidity it was unbelievable but that pendulum swing was showing in a couple different ways one the rosenblum lisa mazda effort continuing to develop they finally got their first 10 qualifying that was great to see the swing we were talking about from 
Acura to BMW that may have been foreshadowed at St. Croix. Sure, Pierre Kleinubing was on pole there, but second through six were all BMWs. Now, the interesting thing there was the changes. What were the reasons for those changes? They were really threefold, Dorsey. First of all, was a concept employed in this championship called rewards weight. What is that? Well, series technical manager Mitch Wright uses a sliding weight scale to keep things equal. Now, if you're a first, second, third place car, he adds weight to you. If you're not doing so well, you're back around ninth and tenth, he takes some of the weight back off, so it keeps the playing field a little bit more level. Another one of the reasons was, remember, Peter Cunningham had thrown down the gauntlet to the BMW drivers at Charlotte. They were about to pick it up and throw it right back in his face. But the third reason was the BMWs had always had undisputed torque and horsepower numbers that everybody loved. That was about to come strong for them. Yeah, Greg, you know, torque and racing can be your best friend. It helps you out a lot of ways. It helps you climbing hills. It helps you if you get bottled into traffic where you really slow down to get the momentum back again. Where horsepower, it just gets you up to top speed and you got to keep it up. So we're going to see a big swing there. A big swing because, for one, the BMWs were about to hit a stretch of tracks that really favored torque and horsepower. And better still, they were about to hit some tracks that really favored the gearing of the older E36 BMW. Now they don't run the chicane on the opening lap, so they're carrying some serious speed around this oval. And look at this drafting battle, DuPont, and he is being pressured. Salama up on the outside right there, and Will Turner oh, right there. Wide. Oh, hugely wide. Way wide, doesn't get it shut down. Now there's three wide going through this next right-hander. That's Salama, 92 Turner, and oh, squeeze play down the inside. And DuPont gets nudged. Schrantz got into him. There goes Harvey taking massive evasive maneuvers. Nice job there. Locked up rear tire right there on that. Oh, big trouble. BMW out of control. And Fitzgerald comes in, slides into the 84, pushes him wide, and it bunches everybody up. Meanwhile, up front, Don Salama leads, and leads pretty comfortably at this point as he's got his teammate in tow, Dorsey, Will Turner. He always liked that scenario. Oh, Pierre Klein moving smoke from the back. That's a huge blow if it's uh, going to be terminal here. It's actually the uh, cap there off the rocker cover is broken there. You can see them unthreading that. I'm not sure if they're going to have a new one here ready to go. They now found a cap. They're going to screw it back on. They'll be back underway. Going to be slick for a lap or so. Then he should be back up to full speed. Look at that. DuPont just rifles underneath Schrantz, and that's now for third. Look at him, he takes a look right here, dives down underneath, and he made that look almost incredibly easy. Well, he made it look awfully easy. Now it moves him up into second place. Yeah. Look at now this. Now look at this, and oh, oh. Dupont, that's for the lead. That was an incredible amount of speed to carry in there and make it side by side off the corner right now. Slama looking to the inside, that's gonna be beautiful, I can tell you that right now. Oh, Dupont slipped well, a little wide there. Who am I to say? Yeah, bang. <laughs> oh. He says, take that. You know, we're going to report he may be getting a black. He does. There's a black flag at start finish. And Dorsey, the report is for going beneath the allowable racing line, exiting the chicane. Well, he certainly seems to be working very well. You can see he started fourth, got involved in that incident, but has just stayed put and has worked his way up into a very strong, really, second place. Alderman and DuPont. And look at DuPont coming up. This is a battle for fourth. The DuPont, once again, boy, he gets off of the oval and into that infield. Taz right now is running third, and DuPont not that far behind. And believe me, Harvey looks in that mirror, he sees blue and white. He knows he's got to get by this lap car as fast as possible. Don Salama, a rookie in this division of racing, keeps the rookie flavor alive this weekend here with a huge, a dominating win in the h &R Springs BMW. And it was a great drive for Don Salam as he put BMW in the victory circle. Kevin Trance, Taz Harvey, Paul Alderman, Alfred DuPont rounding out the top five. We had some new names in the top ten as well. Great to see Bob Nagel, Mark Reed, and Walter Marks all doing a great job. Now, obviously, Don Salama gave BMW their first win of the year. All that potential was realized, and they were just starting to get into the swing of things. Yes, Acura stayed put. I mean, they were in the top three. They had Trance in second, and Taz Harvey, an inspired drive, brought him up to third. That roller coaster was on the upswing for Taz a little bit at this one. But honestly, it easily could have been a BMW top five. If Turner hadn't had his mechanical problems, if DuPont hadn't made his mistake in terms of that line that he crossed, and also, if Neil Sapp hadn't had a mechanical problem in qualifying that relegated him way deep in the pack, it could have been a whole different deal. There's no question about it. Now, let's take a look at the manufacturer's points. After the sixth round, BMW was still 12 points back of Acura with Mazda third with but one point. But BMW was starting to take a run at things 
There was no doubt about that. It was going to get very interesting. And as a matter of fact, an unbelievable race was about to unfold at Road Atlanta. The BMW camp was just getting started as the next round of Road Atlanta proved to be a titanic Bimmer battle. You're going to have to buckle up to enjoy this one. Stay put. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You know, the BMW roll was going to continue as we got to the seventh round at Road Atlanta. At the end of qualifying, they had a one, two, three sweep in their back pocket. And then on top of that, once we got into the race, we were treated to one of the finest race long battles you'll ever see. There it is. And away we go. And boy, the BMW, all of them. Oh, that was. That was Sap and Salama. They got together, Dorsey. Yeah, they brought Salama back into the grass here. Some people in the back, further back in the grass. Pretty wild start, Greg. And look at DuPont just draw away. And of course, now he's caught the draft of Salama. Swings to the outside in terms of the line going into the chicane. Yeah, all that because Salama messed up that corner back there, which we say is the most important corner. On board Salama. Oh. oh, Salama has to get off the track over the curb. Well, he was a little bit optimistic trying to defend yes. that. He does got a run, Jeez, Greg. He had a huge run off there. Up into the draft, moves over. This time he's got the inside. I don't think DuPont realized he was that close. Well, he got a much better run. Now this turn, whoa. A little bump. Oh! <laughs> DuPont again signaling his affection for his fellow competitors. Here's your number one, intern one. <laughs> Who's the S as they go? Here's the run down the hill. And oh, oh Salama's oh. off! That big distance not gonna work. Oh. Hit, hit! Oh, multiple hits. Oh, oh and he pegged those tires. Uh, once you get off there, it's all over. Oh, and we have, that's Taz Harvey. We talked about terrible luck by Harvey Cal. Battle, so he's looking at it and, oh, oh it's Gerald loose! <laughs> Locks up a rear brake, snap alongside and easily by. Oh, yeah, he rotated the wrong way and then locked up trying to save it. Good Sap save. shot under it. It was a brilliant save. Most important corner coming up right here. Turn seven, one of the slower he corners. Got loose. He ran wide. Oh, he went way wide, didn't he? Look at Fitzgerald. They're side by side. Bad race time down the straightaway. Sap not having a better way in. Oh, but he's got the inside line into the chicane. Yeah, he does have that, but he should lose top end. That Here's Fitzgerald. Yes. He pointed about it. Easing by. Speed onto the straightaway dictates top end, and here's Fitzgerald. All right, they're going to be heading down into that chicane. They're still here's Sap now. Now Fitzgerald, then Sap side by side. Little nudge. Here's the turn in. Sap in. Fitzgerald. Oh, big wiggle by Sap. Another wiggle. Fitzgerald looks to the inside. They're side by side under the bridge. Darcy. You see the corner worker? <laughs> Back and away. Head. Fitzgerald, take this. Fitzgerald <laughs> takes the win. I think if it, did, if it stayed the same, if they don't beat us every weekend, they should be embarrassed about it. Wow, as we take a look at the results here from the seventh round, you can see Fitzgerald just beating out teammate Sap. Pierre Kleinubing was third, but not happy about it. DuPont Plum rounding out the top five. Alderman Turner, Peffer, Schrantz, and Shauna Marinus gets her first top ten finish. Great effort by Shauna. Interestingly, though, that was an unreal battle between the two teammates. But Dorsey may be more interesting were the comments made by Pierre Kleinubing in Victory Circle. He's unhappy and uh, strong words. Well, I can understand how Pierre feels, but now is it really the car or is it the fact that maybe the BMWs are at the right racetrack? Remember, Pierre car has had weight added every single time. It's pretty heavy right now. Now, of course, that was a huge win for Mike Fitzgerald over Neil Sapp, but it was the beginning of a dream weekend because he also went on to win in the GT division. It was a great achievement. And also, huge kudos to TC Klein. All of that hard work that they put together with those brand new BMWs was really starting to show well-deserved. And for Neil Sapp, that great performance had him out in front of what would be an all-BMW rookie class. Look at this. Top five rookies, all driving BMWs, and Neil Sapp and Don Salama, not too far out of it either, both of them in the mix for the season championship. So uh, it was a great, great run for the BMWs, particularly in the rookie ranks. Now, the dawning Laguna Seca circuit was up next for the touring cars, where the world-famous corkscrew never fails to deliver its share of thrills. Herta and Zanardi have nothing on these guys. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everybody. The next race was Laguna Seca, and after what the Acura camp felt was honestly a two-race commercial for the ultimate driving machine, the series made some performance adjustments. Well, they're going to reduce the restrictor that's already been put in the BMW. Now, this is 54 millimeters, what they've been running, and this is 52, what they will be running, about that much smaller. Now, they say that's about 20 horsepower per step down. What it does on the racetrack, well, I guess we'll find that out. We are underway. Race is on. Oh, lots of tire smoke in the back, up front. Finally, we got a nice start from the outside. He's going to try and squeeze DuPont. Well, Three more of Trouble in the middle. Somebody's lost a gearbox at the start. Everybody going around that car now. It's oh, there's a hit and a spin. It's one of the H&R Springs cars right in the middle of the field, and somehow, not only does he save it, most people seem to be able to avoid him. Oh, big go, another off. That's a big hit right there. That's the 46 car. That's Bob Nagel, I think, another of the real-time cars. Nagel got tapped there right in the braking zone, and that, that turned the Acura quite hard into the wall. There's Plum, but the big story is both DuPont and Plum have drawn away from Kleinhubing. They are now three seconds clear of Pierre. Oh, and oh. Taz Harvey, a lot of smoke from the... Dublin Racing, Dublin Honda, and Tracy Honda dealership. Acura. Ooh, not good. And there's Salama McCarthy. Boy, there you okay, go. Look at McCarthy. He's coming up on the brakes. Late down into an Andretti turn. Salama has to give him the go. I tell you what, you saw McCarthy right there. He knows this racetrack really well. He set that up perfectly. Revs come up. Green is out. And we have a three-lap shootout to the checker, Dorsey. And this is going to be big. I'll tell you what. All these guys are going to be very aggressive with three laps to go. Look at the BMW's four wide. Trouble, big trouble up here. One of the actors locks up a rear brake, gathers it up, but loses position. Goes wide, and there's McCarthy. McCarthy has gone from sixth to fourth on that restart alone. Fitzgerald was eighth at, at when we came around and picked up the green with all that activity. Oh, oh yes! Puck it off! Sonardi! Herta! No! That's DuPont and 43 plump on after it, and that gives Kleinubing a run. Kleinubing goes around, his teammate picks up second, and DuPont stayed with it. Here oh, here he goes! Big move! Do they see each other? No! A little bit of a rub, more damage there goes, coming up! There goes the, there goes the tail on the, uh, the side view mirror, and they're hitting each other on purpose now. That's intentional. That was a little payback right there. And McCarthy gives way. Smooth move, but here comes Fitzgerald. This McCarthy great. ran wide. Fitzgerald had the momentum. He read that beautifully. Yeah, that was that was a little piece of uh, nasty driving back there a moment ago. DuPont onto the uh, front straight. His 24th career start finally is going to get the win. The crew absolutely ecstatic, as they should be. And it's DuPont taking the win. And it was his first and well-deserved, as you see here as we take a look at the results. Klein Ubing, Plum, Fitzgerald. Look at Terry McCarthy. At problems in qualifying, was dead last. He's a very talented driver. And then you combine that with intimate track knowledge and the return of Steve Dynan's performance group as a sponsor. It brought him from dead last to fifth. And then you take a look at the remainder of the top ten. And I'll tell you what, we looked at that race, and you got to believe, Dorsey, that those performance adjustments you talked about at the beginning of the race coverage apparently worked. Can't say enough about Mitch Wright. You know, not only does he have this sliding scale of weight that he adds, but also when he sees a direction, when the thing's taking a direction, he makes the call, and it was a good call. It's not a popular job he has, but he does it incredibly well. I think this win was less about BMW versus Acura than it was about Alfred DuPont. Laguna rewards aggression and bravery, and those attributes seem to define Alfred DuPont. You've got to respect a driver like that. You know, Greg, when a race car driver is going for his first ever win in front of all those crowd like that, you got three laps to go on a restart, magic happens. It did for him, for sure. He did really what he had to do to win his first race. Well, that's true, and he also rolled the dice, obviously, with that great move up in the corkscrew. And we were going to see more of that at the next event. As the Acura BMW battle continued to rage, we headed next to Las Vegas, Nevada, where one of our very own, John Biziano, took us for a real thrill ride. Welcome back, everybody. The next race took us to the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas. Now, Dorsey, that track, very similar to Texas, where earlier in the season the BMWs had been so strong, but now we're looking at post-performance adjustments. And those adjustments, Greg, really did work. In qualifying, you had four BMWs and three Acuras. Now, Hugh Plum, his first ever pole, is done by an Acura. It's an Acura there, too. And perhaps even more telling was the top seven qualifiers were within four tenths of a second. I mean, it doesn't get any tighter than that. Sean Amarinus, a great qualifying effort, first time in the top ten, right there in tenth. But for all of us, the real excitement was John Bisignano returns to the competition cockpit. 
Hey, Dorsey, that very impressive guy standing behind you? That's my Uncle Guido. You only have nice things to say about me, boy. Uh-oh. Oh, there's the start. That's the start. And Love just got parked. And from the outside of that second row, Neil Sapp got a great launch, Dorsey. Yeah, Neil did a good start for sure, but Fitzgerald had a really rotten start. He stalled the thing almost. And you see right now, three wide going down. They're going to go through here. Now they bypassed that chicane. Right. They'll be going through that now. Starting with the next lap. Here, Klein Newbing has come up behind Plum, so now he's got a drafting partner. And he's probably hoping that if he helps Plum back to the front, Plum will help him a little bit. Trouble here. You know, we mean, boy, is it busy. That's not down the turn. Look, look, big the trouble. And somebody's off. Well, Two off, three off. Of course, it had to be. There were five wide, and they're all banging <laughs> their door handles. And we are now full green, but look at this. Three abreast, going to be four abreast. Down on the apron, up onto the banking. Uh, five, six speed. abreast. Oh, there's the, there's the hit. Yeah, I had to know that was coming, yeah. That was DuPont uh, getting together with Will Turner. Turner yeah, puts Turner around right in front of everybody. Now, is this Fitzgerald taking a run at Sapp? It is. Fitzgerald down to the inside. That's what we talked about. Fitzgerald, he wants to win. Sapp's going after that championship, but really that's not Fitzgerald's worry right now. And he's gone to the front. And while you were talking about that, DuPont went around Kleinubing, an outside pass. And uh, when he shut the door going into the chicane, Pierre gave it up fairly easily, and I would think that's exactly what Pierre, that's his mindset right now. Don't take risks. If somebody's going to race me hard, let him go. Taz Harvey, you look like he had a great run going, Cal. Well, Taz, we have to stop meeting like this, buddy. Once again, what's put you out today? I uh, came out of that last turn onto the banking and the uh, motor let go, and uh, this time I had the right gear. <laughs> but, uh, Calvin, can you do me a favor and just shoot me? Put me out of my misery? got one more race left yet, mate. Oh, Calvin, boy, Good is trouble. it getting interesting at the front. DuPont tried to go around Fitzgerald on the outside, went in way too hot, Dorsey, and promptly shot right off the outside of the track. Well, DuPont had the pass made. He was actually in the lead while we were talking to Cal. He got by on the banking and then brought it in too deep into the chicane, got locked up, got to the outside, and look how it shuffled the front. Well, and right there is DuPont coming after Biz. Biz up on the curves a little bit. DuPont works by him, and that is your second place Shot. Hold him off, Biz. <laughs> Attaboy. I don't think that Toyota's got enough horsepower. Sapp's the only guy that really, with two races to go, is going to be a factor in the championship. And if Kleinum can finish on his bumper, in a way, that's mission accomplished. Pierre loves to win, but he's got to make championship. And so far, it seems like he's been doing a nice job of doing that. He won at Sears Point midseason. Here he comes. Win number two of the year. Fourth of his career. And Hugh Plum has put Acura back in the winner's circle. What a great run it was for Hugh Plum, who beat Alfred DuPont, then Neil Sapp, Pierre klein -Ubing. That's that championship battle. And Don Salama always there in the top five. Turner, Pfeffer, Schrantz, Dobson, and Alderman up into the top ten. Absent the top ten, Taz Harvey. And all credit to him is he could keep his sense of humor when that roller coaster had stayed in the dip for an awfully long time. But this race saw two tremendous drives. Winner Hugh Plum, very controlled and incredibly impressive drive under a lot of pressure to the win, and DuPont from 7th to 2nd, another one of those bonsai runs that he, quite frankly, is famous for. But everything was looking now at the points. As we go into the final round, klein -Ubing had a pretty substantial lead over Neil Sapp, then Schrantz, Plum, and Don Salama. To set up the situation, it was very simple going into the final round. Pierre needed just an 11th place finish, and he was going to be the champion. On the other hand, Neil Sapp had to win and have Pierre have immense problems for him to have a shot at it. And then in qualifying, Pierre promptly did himself a huge favor by getting the pole and that bonus point that comes with it. We're gonna do anything we can to help Pierre win the championship. I'm not exactly in the hunt as we speak for the championship, but whatever I can do to help him out and then uh, win the race would be a, a perfect day. The season finale of the Speed Vision Touring Cars is on. And look at Sapp, boy, very aggressive. He's trying to muscle oh. through. Big squeeze job. Here comes Turner. Here they go, down into turn three. Got to be very careful here, Dorsey. The traffic's so thick. Looks like everybody so far being fairly clean. That's totally amazing. I tell you, look in the back, five wide. There's not room for that action around here. Unbelievable. Look and I at believe Sapp. Here comes Sapp for the lead. He's going up and around Plum because Sapp got such a good start and squeezed. Plan to be at Sapp is your leader. Take a look right now up on top of the screen. 
Well, the BMW, I, got, I think, got helped around. And look at the stack up. Look, oh, man, that was a big hit right there. All three of them. Dobson's car was completely sandwiched. I think there's more action coming from behind. The close back up, and Neil Sapp, he has slipped back. The third. He's dropped to third. Sapp, Sapp has made a mistake of some sort, and it's cost him two positions on the racetrack. And there's Klein, who he's now in front of Sapp at this point. Well, I think that was that shoot between five and six, but here he comes, and Klein Newby this time, oh, and Sapp gave him a little bit of payback there, yeah, squeezed that, him a little bit. That was smart. Klein yeah. Newby doesn't need to mix it up with Sapp, that's for sure. All he needs is 11 plates finish, and you don't want to be wrecked out. Here, though, Dorsey is the pass for the lead. Yeah, look right there, Neil Sapp, big run down the long straightaway to the inside of you. Nothing that you can do about that, I can guarantee you that. Just let it happen. Sapp uh, used a muscle right there. The BMW really had a good run down the straightaway. No place to go, and Dino Hamilton, Darcy, in the uh, Dodge Neon got into a little shoving match and ended up losing out with a, uh, really a half spin. Well, there was a bunch of guys back there muscling around. You saw that. There was a lot of contact going on back there. And onto the front straight, and Neil Sapp is going to win. He did what he absolutely had to do. He takes the win, but Pierre Kleinhubing comes by. There is the real-time crew celebrating a championship. This is every day, and real-time does an awesome job. His eyes got the best. And uh, what can I say, you know? We did what we need to do. We won it. He certainly did. Neil Sapp won the battle here, but as you can see, Klein Newby there in third won the war. Hugh Plum right in the mix again. DuPont Trans. Roger Fu. What a great drive for Roger. Don Salama, Sean Marinus up into eighth. Paul Alderman and Steve Peffer. Pretty remarkable achievement. Uh, Dorsey, obviously, Neil Sapp did exactly what he had to do, but it was just too much to be able to overcome Pierre Klein Newby's point lead. It was, but the emotion is so strong going to the end of the year. If you sit in the driver's briefings, you hear T.C. Klein telling Neil, you've got to win. It all costs whatever you got to do, do it. We don't need the race car. We're years over. On the other hand, Pierre's getting the lecture, don't you wreck this car. You've got to get this car home. So uh, it all goes down to last race. It's great. Oh, it was. It was a great battle all the way to the end. Now, we talked about Roger Fu's great drive. Remember, this track was new to everybody. It was tight and it was twisty, 16th to 6th. He took advantage, certainly, of some attrition, but also very smart. He didn't make the mistake. Sean Amarin, the same story, qualified in the top 10, stayed put, and ended up with an 8th place finish, her second finish in the top 10. But the big story, certainly, was Neil Sapp. Not only did he take it right to the end in terms of the championship, but he ended up convincingly winning the Rookie of the Year over Don Salama, Paul Alderman, Steve Pepper, and Mike Fitzgerald. And as I said, with Neil Sapp, not only did he win Rookie of the Year, he was a major player in the championship right to the end. So, Sapp got the Rookie of the Year, certainly, but we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the year in racing for the Speed Vision Touring Car Championship. With the season completed, we should now take a look at the final point standings for the top five. Klein Newby had enough points amassed that he was able to hold off the late season run of Neil Sapp. Kevin Schrantz was third, Hugh Plum fourth, and Don Salama was fifth. I think it's important to note that those top five in that championship chase were all race winners. It still pays to be out front in this series. Now, Dorsey, you were at every round of the championship. We've just done a review of the season. What really strikes you as memorable? Well, I think the biggest thing is Mitch Wright, the job that he did, the excellent job of bringing parity to all these different types of cars. Then the competition itself, excellent competition, new teams like Sean Amarinus and Neil Sapp, and then guys that have been around that really came into their own this year, Alfred DuPont and Hugh Plum, for instance. Hugh Plum had had a win before, but he had two this season, a great run for him. But what about next year? Well, Pierre Kleinhubing has indicated he's back with real time. He wants to come after it again in 2001. For everybody running Acuras, they're very excited. New Acura Integra R's are supposed to be delivered for next season. Neil Sapp, who had such a great run as a rookie, is he coming back? He doesn't know. He wants to. He's ready to. It's a matter of funding. This is, after all, a highly uh, effective and expensive professional championship. Now let's take a look at the schedule that's up for the year 2001. It's a great mix. In March, Fort Worth and Sebring, a couple of great venues there. A bit of a break then in May, Mosport and Lime Rock. Then in July, Sears Point, always a great track. In August, this is exciting, a return to Portland International Raceway in the Cascade Mountains, gonna be great. In August, a return to Quebec, but this time to a refurbished Le Circuit Mont Tremblant, a great venue from the past. In September, back to Laguna Seca. October, Road Atlanta and Charlotte, and then San Diego will again be the season finale. Right now, that final date is yet to be announced. 
But a look back now for our champion of this season. For Pierre klein his speed and his raw ability has never been questioned. But as we're about to see in a moment from Mosport last year, as an example, he sometimes in the past would get involved in really what were pointless and point-stealing skirmishes. Here he got into a shoving match with Taz Harvey. His car ends up with damage, and he had to struggle to get to the end of it. That happened more than one occasion. Michael Galati won the championship. This year... Pierre klein being avoided such incidences. He stayed clean. This year, he won the championship. You can add maturity to those other attributes. Even though he won a championship in 1997, this was the year Pierre klein being proved he is of championship caliber. For Dorsey Schrader, for everybody at Speed Vision who was so fortunate to bring you this great racing all season long, I'm Greg Kramer. Thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you all back in 2001. Take care.